This is the Tad Show. It might be. Boys and girls, it's time to gather around the learning tree with your kind and caring teacher, Taz. He's always so angry. He yells at everyone. Why? He's sharing his one-of-a-kind insider perspective of professional wrestling. It's all about me. It's me. Me, me, me. It's the learning tree with Taz. Again, that is the longest short version of that thing ever. <laughs> it's 10 seconds shorter than the other one. Too many crickets. <laughs> That is long. Remember the outrage when we first played the <laughs> short one? <laughs> so, look, here's the LT deal on this thing here. Honestly, like, so with wrestling, okay, in, in the years of wrestling, the, the companies that have, this is, I hate the blank, I don't like blanket statements, but I almost have to do this here. Okay. Ugh. When you don't have a wrestling person or wrestling people, Running the front office, a lot of times there's failure. You need people from the wrestling business. The WWE, as massive as they are, as massive as they are, daily in-ring creative operations are ran by wrestling people. Which starts with Vince, because he's grew up in the business. And everyone that aligns with him, that runs the creative, well, I shouldn't say the creative and like writers, I don't mean that. I mean the head honchos of creative and the, th the feel of everything is ran by wrestling people. Vince McMahon. <laughs> and you can put Stephanie in there too. She's a wrestling person. She grew up in the business. Shane, obviously Triple H. Wrestling people. EC Dub, all the success ECW had. Paul Heyman, a wrestling person. He never wrestled. Well, neither did Vince McMahon. But the thing is, Paul came up in the business. 13, 14 years old as a photographer. Everybody knows the story. You know, always around, like, all these old-time wrestling guys. Grew up in the business. He's a wrestling mind. Dixie Carter was never in the wrestling business. She never claimed to be, to her credit. She's from the advertising business. She's from a wealthy family, as you guys know, Texas Oil. She graduated from Ole Miss, very intelligent, and I believe her expertise was in marketing, her degree or whatever she's got. I believe we're advertising or something like that. I believe she had a, an advertising company before she hooked up with Jeff Jarrett and, and bought TNA. When Jeff Jarrett was there, it was ran by a wrestling person in Jeff Jarrett. You need wrestling people to run wrestling companies. I like Billy Corgan. He's not a wrestling person. John Gaborik was a guest on my show. I know John a long time. He's not a wrestling person. He's not. He was brought into WWE by Kevin Dunn to help control Tough Enough One. He's not, in essence, from the business. But to John Gaborik's credit, all the years in WWE... He's learned an immense amount about the wrestling business at the highest level. So with a guy like Gaborik, you got to put a pass. you got to put a pass because he's learned so much about the business from, like I said, in the words of Conor McGregor, the dons of the business. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hack that going forward from Conor <laughs> McGregor. I think I'm going to start using the dons. That's a hack on me. Hey, what the F? Everybody hacks me. Why not I hack everybody else? Will you stop? I might as well. So you got to have wrestling. Look at Ring of Honor. Oh, well. You can have another company own an op own the company, but they're not operating the company. There's wrestling people running Ring of Honor. Wrestling people running Ring of Honor. That's important. Lucha Underground's its own separate entity, and, and they do have wrestling people there. But I'm just saying that's like a that's a TV show. That's a, it's different. It's, it's more of a Hispanic, like a Mexican feel variety show with wrestling and lucha. So it's a little bit different.